people. <laughs> morning, everybody. <laughs> uh, let me get a grip. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the journey within. I'm sorry, we were just chatting away, catching up. Uh, welcome to you all from all over the, the planet. Um, glad you're here with us. My name is Reverend Janet Nohavik. I'm pastor of The Journey Within in Thompson Lakes, New Jersey, joining you virtually. Um, and joining us this morning is um, Minister Colin Bates, who's ordained through the Spiritualist National Union. He's a tutor at the prestigious Arthur Finley College, certificate holder. He demonstrates and teaches around the world when we're allowed to go. Um, and just a very dear friend to The Journey Within. And as well as David Shearzer, who joins us, he's a certificate holder from the uh, Spiritualist National Union. He's a tutor in training at the Arthur Finley College. Um, and I know that's gonna be a wonderful experience for everybody involved. And uh, as well, uh, very involved with healing. Um, so uh, David as well travels the world teaching mediumship, the philosophy of uh, spiritualism and healing. Uh, and trans, both gentlemen work with trans. So welcome to our platform, uh, our dearest friends. So uh, we just wish you were here in person. Um, Hi, everyone. We, good morning. Um, we always begin with spiritual healing. Spiritual healing is the laying on of hands in prayer. It's not to be used in, uh, it's to be used in addition to medical attention. If you were here in the chapel, the healers would be in front of the room and you would come up and sit with them and uh, they would put their hands on your shoulder for spiritual healing. Our healers are with us this morning and during the meditative time, they'll be sending absentee healing to you here present um, and to all of those you're requesting prayers for. If there's any names you would like to put, please put them in the chat box, first name, last initial, no last names because of HIPAA um, and confidentiality. Um, if there's anyone during the course of the week um, that you'd like to request healing for, please just email or phone the Journey Within. We're very attentive to the um, uh, information coming into the church office, and we're very grateful to our healers as well. So I'm going to put on a quiet piece of music. Um, if you'd like to participate, just go into the quiet meditation and focus on your own breath and focus on healing, um, igniting um, and supporting your own uh, immune system within yourself um, as the healers and healing to us and to those you are requesting healing prayers for. Uh, so I'll just open with a prayer. Infinite and gracious God, as we come together this morning, we ask for healing for those who are present, for those who people have requested healing for, for a beautiful planet itself for all of the nations as they navigate through this time of the pandemic, for particularly India who is suffering so hard at this time, for the places around our planet where there are still our children that are suffering or hungry, places where there is war and unrest. We pray for all of your family members and friends, relatives who may be experiencing times of unrest in their own being, whether it be emotionally, physically, mentally, or spiritually. May they feel the hand in the presence of God and a ministry of angels as we come together for healing this morning. Amen. As we come to the end of our healing time, we continue to send absentee healing to all who have requested our prayers. Amen. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you all for uh, joining us. Um, again, my name is Reverend Janet Nohavik. I'm pastor of The Journey Within in Pompton Lakes, New Jersey. Um, and I would like to ask one of our guests to open with prayer. As we come together within the quiet and within the stillness, gracious and eternal Mother, Father, God, in whom we move and have our very being, we gather in light, in love, in fellowship and in friendship. And we ask that your love shall uplift and strengthen each and every one. As we move into the stillness of prayer, may our thoughts be carried upon the wings of love to touch all those in need, not only within our world, but indeed the worlds beyond. 
as we come into this time when we are seeking your presence, your love and guidance, and above all, your strength within our lives. May we know that deep within our hearts that we are indeed always loved, and that in acknowledging love, we become love, and that we can share your love throughout the world. As we move into this time of communion, we welcome the presence of the Spirit in the absolute knowledge that love, like life, is indeed eternal. And as we celebrate the love, the life, and the friendship of all those who have been a part of our lives, may they indeed draw ever close and ever near. May we feel and know their strength and presence. May this be a time of peace, a time of love, May we take that peace and strength and use it within the coming days. Amen. Amen. Hope you enjoyed that piece of music. Uh, I'd like to introduce one of our guests as the speaker for today. Thank you very much, Sally. Thank you. Uh, welcome, everybody. It's my honor and pleasure to address you. And what is really interesting is like, I have no idea where this address is going to. Isn't that awesome? And it's, it's like that leap of faith. That leap of faith when we are within spiritualism or when we, when we touch that, what we call spiritualism, those churches that, that are open and hopefully soon open to embrace uh, people in a physical form again, but also here on Zoom. Leap of faith is what people actually need when they come through our doors for the first time. Leap of faith. Because here we gather, here we gather as the converted. We all believe in spirit. So I believe that you all do. The fact is, how is it really, when you think back, when the first time you were touched by that world of spirit. The first time you thought, you know what, I've never even considered that there is an afterlife, but there is something within me that calls me to go to such a place. Can you maybe remember how you felt sitting in your car and said, I need to go in there. I don't know what is going to happen. Because normally people in my world of rationality and business and money, they say, what afterlife? What spirit world? Are you going insane? And I know you all know that. How many of you kept your mediumistic faculty or your belief in, into a world beyond that physical realm of life to yourself? Not even talking about your beliefs to your family members who are the dearest and closest that you have because you didn't know, well, how do they react? So that moment when you open that door to go into such a church and you think, do you know what? Is there like rattles? Are there drums? Are there, what is going on in such services? How are those people able to communicate with the spirit people? This is a big step. It is a leap of faith that people need to have or take when they start investigate what we're all about. When people ask me, David, what's your job? Well, am I telling them? Well, I communicate with the dead people. That's the reaction that I get. So I try to make it a bit more easy and say, well, yes, I'm teaching meditations and, and metaphysics because nobody really gets that word metaphysics. But is it a cop out because I'm not secure within my own belief in saying, Do you know what, I just know that the world of spirit is existent. But maybe also because I'm, I might be afraid that I'm not able to explain, why would you want to have contact with those that you love and pass before you? That's the question. Someone, I guess, who never really lost someone, 
Thea, who was a real inspiration within their lives, how would they have that urge to want to communicate with someone they might have hardly known, grandmas, grandpas? They didn't have maybe a relation. But then all of a sudden, when we go into that, these relationships of father, mothers, sisters, siblings, child, children, then all of a sudden you can see how important that communication starts to become. We can't bring back the dead, but we can bring back the living. That's the message within every communication of mediumship. We bring back the minds and the memories of those who are still very much alive. And that brings hope into people's lives. It doesn't ease the pain of having lost someone very dear. But that moment when these people get to know, do you know what? Your mom, dad, whoever they lost is okay. They start to release the stress that they had. Especially now in this time where people couldn't say goodbye to their loved ones. The question they want to have answered is not about what is my finances going to be? What is this and that? They just come and say, do you know what? I want to know if my loved one is okay. So you can start to recognize how important those connections is with our people. You can recognize, starting recognizing how important that is to know that there is something beyond what we call death. Because knowing that there is life eternal brings a new element, a new dimension into physical life that brings in that responsibility of self. That song is beautiful. Heal the world, make it a better place. It's a beautiful song. But who actually is making this better place? Who? Should it maybe uh, be called heal the world? You make it a better place. Because then you are addressed. If I address you, help me. Then I'm asking you to go into action. When we reach out to the world of spirit, we also say, help me, lead and guide me. And sometimes it's really tough and hard because it seems that there is only the world of spirit that we can reach out because there is no one else around us that we think cares enough. But the message of the spirit is that we are already spirit in this world, that we make this life a better place. Because ladies and gentlemen, we live in an extraordinary world. We actually live, already live in a perfect world. But now we have to recognize that this world consists of a very, very fragile balance. As we are part of this balance of life. And as soon as we lose an important element of this balance that we call the loved ones, we are bereaved, something changes within us. So in having these places on Zoom, where people can come, where people can realize that, do you know what, communicating with the living in the afterlife is as normal as communicating with you here in the earth plane. 
and is helping to get that healing that they need because their soul has awakened, their spirit is enlightened to find out more. So we, all of us, have this responsibility then to step up and say, welcome, come in. I do know it's not an easy step to come through this door. But here we are, understanding where you are. We can't take pain away. We can't take suffering away. Because unfortunately, so it seems, that suffering and pain is important for our growth, for our soul growth. But what I want to point out here is that everything that we are going through is not wasted. Everything that you have experienced will in one or the other way help someone else. And if not in this life, maybe in the other. This life counts. Our actions count. We already live in a perfect world. If we treat it as being perfect. If we bring back that sacredness, what we are starting to become in harmony and balance, with one another, but also with nature. Because that's the world of spirit. It is the truth of natural laws. We believe in God. We believe in this power of creation. And we believe in the power of healing. We are the healing. You are the healing. You make this life a better place. I know the world of spirit is always right beside us, supporting, encouraging us, because we have the power. We have the strength and if we find the courage to change this world so we can make it a better place. Nothing is ever wasted. Everything has a reason. You might not know it now, but there will be one moment in time where you each and every one of you will touch that very soul to make a change, to make a difference in their lives. So open the church to your own heart and let those people in. Show them who you are. Show them what you believe in for them to see how great thou art. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, David, for those beautiful words. <clears throat> um, if we were here in person at the church, it would be time for announcement and collection. If you're so moved, Karen has put this little box there. If you take a picture, it will uh, take you to a place you can donate if you're so moved. Uh, we appreciate uh, all your donations, great and small. A uh, few announcements. Um, there is a meeting on September 1st with the board. Um, we'll be getting the board together to have a conversation you know, about plans to open if we can. Um, at the minute, it's still six feet apart and it just doesn't make sense with our small chapel. Um, but we'll see at that point um, if it's possible. I checked with the other churches in town. Um, they're doing it by registration only. Um, and as you know, our chapel is not very big. so. Uh, we'll keep you apprised. We will be making uh, some sort of announcements going forward. Um, so September 1st, we'll try and relook at things. I appreciate your support. 
Um, there is a class today at one o'clock on the development of mediumship for intermediate to more advanced students, uh, not absolute beginners. There is a demonstration of, of mediumship with myself and Leonard Tatt, which is a fundraiser for the Hydesville Schoolhouse. That's at 2.30 here, 7.30 in the UK. Um, there is the student service at 6.30 p.m. Um, so please join us for all of those. Those are today. Almost every day in the week, there is some sort of activity happening. Monday night, there is Journey to Your Soul. There is an advanced mediumship class. Tuesday night, there's a beginner's mediumship class, an intermediate mediumship class, and the healing group that comes together. Wednesday night is our uh, healing and message service. Thursday night is a beginner's psych development class. Also at Wednesdays, there's a midday class that people around the, the planet had asked for because a lot of times it's night for them when we have ours. So Wednesday, there's a 2.30 in the afternoon class. Um, this weekend, Christine Morgan will be with us on Friday evening from, um, I guess it'll be Saturday morning where she is in Australia for a class. Tony Stockwell begins a four-day class on Thursday, uh, accurate and compelling one-on-ones with Tony Stockwell. Um, Stella Upton next weekend has a class on paranormal investigation. Um, Val Williams will be with us next Saturday on building your confidence. There's a demonstration with myself and Kobe Rebel next Saturday night. Um, there's clairvoyance with uh, Paul Jacobs. That's two to four next Saturday. Um, so there's quite a bit happening, um, I have to say. Um, if you, uh, and next Sunday is Mia Otteson uh, building your confidence as well. So you can join us for a lot of opportunities in the next week. Um, if you go to the Journey Within Events page, there's lots of things happening underneath there. Um, so you can check out everything. Um, thank you to everybody who volunteers and helps all the things that are going on. Reverend Karen, Reverend Patty, um, so many people that really have stepped up during the time of pandemic to help us. If you'd like to drop off any food for the Kumak um, Pantry in Patterson, you can bring it here. No glass, no perishable, just leave it at the door. Um, when we collect enough, it goes to Patterson. We take it down ourselves. Um, so you can do that uh, for us as well. Can't think of anything I'm forgetting. Um, I know it's, it's, I don't have it in front of me, but I know pretty soon in June, there's, uh, um, I think it's the summer solstice service. So we're heading towards the longest day of the year. And then, then we're already heading towards darkness. So enjoy these really light days. It's fantastic. Um, as well. Um, so uh, we'll be moving towards our demonstration of mediumship. As a spiritualist church, we do believe that life is continuous. Through a demonstration of mediumship, we seek to reunite those here with those who have crossed over. It's a bit different here on Zoom. <clears throat> if you can take the contact, please put up your little yellow hand. If a few people could put up their little yellow hand, that would be great. It's along the bottom, usually on your screens or phones, um, could be under the three dots. That means after the uh, medium gives out a body of evidence, you can take 95 to 100% of what is said. If you can take the first three pieces, and then as you continue, uh, you can't continue to take the message, please lower your little uh, hand so we can find a recipient as quickly as possible. If all else fails, please type to me in the chat box. Um, we've learned how, how to navigate all this on Zoom and it, it actually works pretty good, um, I have to say as well. We will have a piece of music before we move into the demonstration of mediumship. Um, you only see us, you don't see the rest of the crowd, but if you do take the contact, we'll be bringing you in uh, via voice. Um, so uh, there's communication happening there. So we'll just be moving into a piece of music before we move on to the demonstration. We'll turn the demonstration over to our guests. Thank you. Hi, everyone. As I was just sitting and blending within uh, the essence of the spirit here, I know I've got a lady here and I feel that she is a mother and she shows herself towards the end of her life. And it's as if there was a great tiredness with her towards this last part. And what I'm so conscious of here is that she can't believe that she's old. And there must have been conversations and I feel I need to talk to her daughter. 
I know that I've got family all around me here. And I, I seem to remember these conversations where she would talk to you and you would talk to her. And I know that there's nursing involved uh, during this last part of her life. And she would have said to you, I can't believe how much time has gone by. I can't believe that, that I'm nearing the end of my life. And, and so I know I need to link also to the name of Elizabeth. Elizabeth seems to come in here as well. And I keep doing this and it's as if uh, I've got problems to do with the circulation, most definitely problems to do with uh, possibly the lymphatic system, uh, the blood system. And I know that I've got marks on the skin here that I can feel with her. She's, she is beautiful and she loved to read. She loved to read and she seems to show me here the books that she loved to read, but she used bookmarks. She used bookmarks. And some of these books are still here and you have your mother's bookmarks. And every so often you'll open a book that, that she'd been reading or that she'd read before. And then all of a sudden you seem to see that. And then when she'd do a card, she'd put love from mum, love from mum, and then little kisses afterwards. I seem to feel that is very much a part of her. And I know that there is this gradual decline before she's moving to the spirit. Definitely the name of Elizabeth is called again. So it seems to be very strong with her because I seem to, uh, I seem to feel that. Uh, the nursing and the care and the love of the family is something that she really is, is so very, very clear with. And you either went back home or you either stayed with her or, or you, you looked after her in some way. There's a coming back here, a coming back to see her, to look after her during this last uh, time. There's a dog here as well. So I know there's been a beloved dog, not a big dog, but a smaller dog that just seems to come here. Who can understand this with mother connecting to Elizabeth? She had a, a condition that really just wore her down so that she was so tired towards the end of her life that it was very difficult here. She had curly wavy hair at one time uh, in her life. It's very full. I do feel that, but it's as if it needed to be a bit shorter towards this latter part. Uh, and I know that that was done. So who can understand this information? Uh, Beth had her hand up the whole time. So I brought her in. There are three other names. Hands. Three other names. OK, so let's just get a bit more and then we just find out exactly who it is. One thing that I just need to say here, although it's not evidential, uh, your mother's a real lady. Uh, she is, she is, there is just such a feeling here that's lifting my heart and the kindness here. So I know that when she would have passed, that it would have been, it would have been a great loss to the family. Uh, she just keeps going back to Elizabeth. So it must be either her name or a name that connects to her very strongly. So who understands the name of Elizabeth as well? Elizabeth, you're um, unmuted, I believe. Yeah, thank <laughs> um, I'm Elizabeth or Beth. And actually, I can take a hundred percent of that. Okay, like and and you're Elizabeth, you're Beth, so yeah. so you understand the name of Elizabeth. So let's just work with this here. You understand that that there was a very strong gradual decline uh, with your mother over a period of time, is what I'm feeling here. Yes. Because it's not it's not the sense of a quick passing, and then I do know that there is either hospital care. Um, there's care in some way towards this last part of her life. Um, we had her on hospice and the whole family was... Okay, because I just know that I'm being taken care of. I'm being looked after within some way. Can anybody else understand all this information? There's a Samantha, a Cindy. Right, okay, because I just feel as if everybody still needs to listen here. She brings me to the month of June. So the month of June seems to be very um, significant for her. And she's got more than one daughter. Yes, my, there's four, five daughters. She's right, had. okay. So stay with me, dear one, and everyone else listen. Because she just said, talk about my girls, talk about my girls. And, and I know... Um, that I've that I've got this this scent on it's like little women really you know the story and it's like everyone's everyone's there everyone's around the bed and and um, somebody's got the longest hair so it's one of the daughters got the longer hair um, I'm trying to think uh, yes yes my yes. okay then 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 this is fine because that's what I seem to be seeing here and 
the love between all of you is extraordinary, although all the girls are very different with very different personalities. Is that right? Yes. And yeah. also there's been a scattering of the family. So the girls live in different locations. Is that right? Yes. Because there's just this feeling of moving away here, there within some way. She's really, there's coming up to a time of an anniversary that connects to your mother. Is that right? Uh, her birthday is June 6th. Ah, oh, beautiful. Because I just feel that it's coming soon here. There's just such a feeling of thank you for everything that you are and for everything that was done. And what is just so beautiful here is, is that when it was time for her to pass, she just closed her eyes and she just slipped away. Um, yes, it, it, I think it was difficult for a few days. Um, but that last part, uh, yeah, yes. that last part is where I seem to be with her. And the reason that I'm spending so much time on, on, on her last days is because it was a time when everybody got together. Yes. And that would have meant the joy to her more than anything. I really do feel, although you're saying yes to 100% of this, there's someone else there that's put their hand up that also understands all of this information because I feel as if I need to touch more than one person with this. And somebody's got your mama's box. Somebody's got your mother's box. It's like, do you understand that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And also as well, if I go into the box, I've got things that belong to your mother. There's something there that's belonged to your grandmother. Do you understand that? Yes. And also there's something to do with trinkets that were brought for your mother. Um, I'm not sure. From the children. Trinkets. Um, I'd have to think about it. I don't know. Okay. Elizabeth, can you understand all this? Elizabeth, if you could unmute Elizabeth Carmel. I can, I can understand 85%. Um, okay, well, if, if, if Beth is 100%, then let's just stay with Beth then, because it really should uh, really all go together. Mm -hmm. Because this, this sense of feeling, this sense of memory, and this sense of love. Um, and is, there is one other hand, Samantha. I don't know if you want to hear her voice. Okay, let me just hear from Samantha. Do you understand about the box and the pieces that were bought for your mother? Samantha, if you could unmute. Yes, everything. Everything? Yeah. Okay. And would you understand about your mother keeping the treasures that were brought for her? Yes. And it's not about value here. It's about love. Yes, correct. And the things you see would have meant the world to her. And she's so beautiful. And, and all of a sudden, my heart's busting. So I feel yes. as if, uh, although we've got two people 100%, both of you take this, will you please? Yes. Because it, she's so sentimental. And do you understand about the bookmarks? Yes. yes. And she's just spoken about Mary. So there's a connection to Mary. Yeah, Mary and Elizabeth. Lovely, that's beautiful, because I just seem to feel that. And the bookmarks are such treasures. And I've got pieces of paper that she wrote on, that your mother wrote on. And her writing is like really small. Uh, it's not yeah. big, expansive, but it's small writing. And she just keeps saying love from mum. And then she's doing kisses after the love from mum. Thank you for the kindness. Thank you for the small things that you did. Thank you for the lighting of the candles. Thank you for the roses. Thank yeah. you for the words that were written for me by you. You understand this? I do and they meant the world to me. I didn't want to go, you know, I didn't want to leave anybody. And they had to drag me to heaven. You understand this? Yes. She said, I did not go easily. They had to drag me. And everyone was telling me it's time for mama to go. And she said, mama didn't want to go. Yes. <laughs> she is, I tell you, she is adorable, but I wouldn't argue with your mother. I just say, yes, okay, that's fine. And I seem to feel that. And her pastry is beyond this world. Do you understand that? About it's making the pastry. And the she just said, make sure you make it properly. Make sure you make it right. And I just seem to feel that. And then I seem to be touching all the, the kitchen things and the utensils. And, and it, it's as if anything that is there that belonged to your dearest, dearest mother means the world. Yes. And that whenever you touch them, 
um, it's there. But I do have to say, not everybody got to say goodbye. Me. That's it. Got it. Wonderful. Not My everybody got. To... Late. That's it. Because not everybody got to say goodbye. And she just, oh, don't start me off. She just said, true love is never having to say goodbye. Yeah. Will you remember that? Because in some yeah. way, I want to lift your chin. I want to look right into your eyes. And I want to say, you remember this, my girl. <laughs> All right? Thank All you. the love in the world. Thank you. So both of you take it, if it's 100% for both of you. All the love. Beautiful. Lovely. Is it me? <laughs> it, is it okay to do one, Janet? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, okay. Um, uh, <laughs> really so beautiful to listen down to, to, to those uh, uh, coming together. I have to say, it's like, oh my God. Uh, I now have a lady here, and I, I have to, well, it's, it's, it's interesting. You, you speak about a uh, leap of faith, and then the spirit seems to change everything and say, they prove it. So you have to take that leap of faith. And I have to say, I, I need to do this now. So I know that I have a lady here with me. And, and what is really interesting with this lady here, she shows me this picture. And this picture is somehow connected to a zeppelin. I hope that is understood. Do you understand what the zeppelin is? Those air, 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 aircraft with those big balloons on it. So I know that there is connection to it, but I also know that there is a connection to um, to wartime and having to leave. And I believe it's Germany, I have to say. Who understands a lady in the world of spirit who has this memory about wartime, who has this memory about leaving uh, for another country? I have to say, I'm not quite sure if it's America though. It could also be the UK. I'm not quite sure about that. I also seem to feel that because I hear that, I, I'm really having to go with that one. Um, I, I feel that the lady I lady I want to talk to would have had a very close connection with, with her grandmother. And, and it feels like that grandmother was very influential that you stayed and, and lived with her. Because it feels like that mom, something must have happened with mom that that has 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 made grandma to step in and look after you. Who understands these informations? I'm really. Hmm. Is there anybody, Janet? I don't see a hand yet. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So who are, who knows about mom having lost mom early in life and then I could bring Sue in. Sue has her hand up. Sue, thank you very much. Oh sorry, Sue, I just muted you. You're gonna mute again. Okay. I can you hear me now? I can hear you, Sue, yes. Okay. Um well I can take I can take pieces of this, okay. and it's a complicated story. So I know uh, it's complicated to you. <laughs> yeah. Also a, a, there's also a Lisa who put her hand okay. up, just so you know, dear. So Lisa, okay. let let me hear your voice quickly. Uh, I can take um, a mom who lost her mom and was was raised by her grandmother. Okay. But you wouldn't understand the Zeppelin or the or this time of, of, of era, Lisa. I'm sorry, the, the what? A Zeppelin in the sky. A Zeppelin. Zeppelin. No, I'm sorry, I wouldn't get that. Okay. Uh, Sue, would you understand the Zeppelin? Yes, I do. Mm. Lisa, I have to go with the Zeppelin because that was really, really clear here. But thank you very much. Listen up as well, Lisa. So what is the part that you didn't understand, Sue? Uh, well, the the relationship. Um, I I didn't know my grandmother. Uh, uh, I think you've got my mother's mom. I think it uh, would be mom's mom. So uh, well, maybe I have a I have a. Let me work with Sue first, and Lisa. Maybe maybe I'll, I'm coming back to you if if I have time. Um, but but it's really interesting because it um it was a decision. Um, for the lady with the Zeppelin, it was a decision to move the country. It wasn't just, I have to flee. Does that make sense? Yes. Ah, that's it. It's really, and, and this lady, I have to say, and I must say, this is, this is your, is that your grandmother, please? Yes. Thank you. Um, because that is a very intelligent woman. This is a woman who has, who has logic. This is a woman who, who must have studied 
or had the brain of a stud, do you know, like university brains and stuff. Do you understand that? Yes, that makes sense. Ah, okay, because it's like I'm seeing everything very clear. It is my decisions how I live or, or live life, and I'm not being made a fool of. Does that make sense, Sue, with your grandmother from here? I'm, I'm sorry. Could you say that again? I didn't get what she you was. Said. She was. She was a very strong lady with her own beliefs. With her own, um, nobody could just take the mick out of her. Nobody could fool her, make a fool out of her. Does that make oh, sense? Oh, that's 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 very true. Yes very much because I, I still feel that she was very good with calculation as well and and typewriter do you understand the typewriter please the typewriter could be my mom mm -hmm. uh i I, I, I don't know if my grandmother could type uh but okay. my so, mother so, has an interesting connection with a typewriter so that okay. could let me let me let because because um if, if I'm now moving to mom, because it's it's really funny, mom would have loved beautiful nails. Oh, yeah. Um, well, she always had nice hands. Hang on a minute. Sue, just wait a minute. Lisa, do you understand the typewriter? Uh, for my grandmother, I wouldn't know. But the nails, yes. The nails, because I just saw the nails, because they are long, they, they are very... They're, they're, they're good, they're, they're having a, a, a bright color. So do I connect with the nails with your mom, please, Lisa? Yes. Um, she's full of life. This is a lady, your mom is, is a lady that embraced life, life to the fullest. She wanted to have everything in life. Does that make sense? She is a, she is a force to reckon with, Lisa. Yes. Do you understand that with your mom? It's like, it's like nothing is pessimistic here. Everything is optimistic. If you want something, Lisa, go and get it, Lisa. True. Oh, well, it's incredible. And it feels to me when she comes through, that must be very relevant to you and your life at the moment, Lisa. Go and True. get it, Lisa. It's like, it's like who, who, who is second? No one is second. There is only first. Nothing else matters. Does that make sense? And then she smiles here. I have to say... Um, she just she just showed me the lipstick, so I know she would have had lipstick as well. So she would, absolutely, ab yeah, absolutely. It's like like, and it's not a subtle lipstick. I have to say, it's something you see me come in here. You see. <laughs> it's not fun. She has a humor that is incredible, but she's all of life. She's about life and and how in how you interact with people. Um, uh, what you want from people and what kind of experiences you want to have. Does that make sense, Lisa? It does. It's like, it's like oh my, and, and more. Um, do you understand when I say the memories of country fair? When you um, just come out with, with, with the parents and go to a country fair and, 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 and have, uh, I don't know, sugar stuff and sugar apples and, and stuff like this. Would you understand that, Lisa? Yes. Uh, it's like all about enjoying life here and all about get that. Well, mm, I, I shouldn't say it because it's, it's sweet, it's calories and we shouldn't go into too sweet, but it's a symbol. Does that make sense, Lisa? It yes. feels to me that, that your mom knows that you, I, that's no diagnosis. If I'm wrong, wrong, but it, it's like, the, the sweetness of life, bringing the sweetness back into life, not a per se with food. Does that make sense? Yes. Because there is a, there is a hesitance with food. It can't be. We shouldn't. We shouldn't encourage food or sweet food. Does that make sense too? Indeed. Oh, okay, so she knows everything about you. So she has never left, I have to say. I want to come back to Sue. Sue, uh, could you unmute yourself again? Thank yep, you very I'm much. Here. Uh, I just, I just wanna, I wanna talk about you and and do you understand studying uh, more studies, more more achievements on your uh, in your life? Does that make sense, please? Yes, yes, I've been very involved lately. Yes. Ah, well, well done because it's it's really and this is something technical. This is something intellectual. There's PhD level stuff. Does that make sense, Sue? Well, yes. Thank you. Yes. Jeez, just awesome. It's like, it's like, oh, I only know it in German, Luftschlösser. It's like air castles. 
Okay, well, in German fits. My grandparents were German. Uh, my mother's German. Uh, my mom saw the the Hindenburg in Germany, and so did my grandmother. Um, I my am grandmother, so proud now. Not because I don't know what I'm doing here, ladies and gentlemen, but I felt that is ace. Well, I have to say, you don't but get a zeppelin too often. <laughs> Well, I have to say I wasn't courageous enough to say Hindenburg, but but it's like Luftschloss built those castles of 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 of, of uh, clouds. Does that make sense? So yes. so whatever you want to achieve, do it. Go on to this ride, and and it's a slow ride. I have to say because it's it's about what you want to achieve. Okay. Well, well, Carl, thank you very. Much. I've been really asking spirit for some guidance, uh, very intensely. This past week in fact and uh i've been looking for this encouragement so this is this is really very touching and thank and you th very much so thank you uh, so leap of faith i have to say it's all about leap of faith it is for sue it's for you lisa and i think anybody else just take it do it you can't lose anyway no oh, thank you. Th thank you that, very much for working with me, both of thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've got tears in my eyes. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you very much, gentlemen. Thank you for that beautiful demonstration of mediumship. That's going to bring us to the end of our service. Uh, we thank you all for being here with us. And I, I have to say, people are typing in the chat box. You are, you are our two favorite people, I have to say. We love you guys. So. Um, and we miss seeing you in person. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, that will be bringing us to the end of service. Uh, we would be asking one of our guests to close with prayer. As we stay within this wonderful quiet and stillness, may our hearts full of love go forward upon the wings of prayer. May they uplift and strengthen all those in need throughout our world. We are strong when we are together. May we always acknowledge that although we may be separate, we are part of this one stupendous whole that is the power of love and light, all brought together by the power of creation in whom we move and have our very being. May thy blessing shed your light, your love upon each and every one here, all those who are connected and throughout our world may peace reign supreme. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you for having us. Thank okay. you. We love you guys. We so, love you too. <laughs> we'll just be closing with Susan Boyle because we like her. We do. We love you guys so much. Mwah. Love you too. Bye. See you soon, everyone. Bye. 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 Love you be guys. Awesome. <laughs>